Kia ora, kia rana. Hi guys. Hey, welcome Virgo to your June Terrascope reading with me. I hope wherever you are viewing from around the world, you have time to sit back, relax and take in the messages that will be coming for your June reading. We're going to use the same format as last month because everyone seemed to really enjoy it. So why not keep something that you're all enjoying? Here's your shuffling finished. So with that we will lay out the cards and see what's in store. Nice way to start guys. Okay, let's see if we can see all of the images in the viewfinder. I think I might just have to rearrange the camera a little bit. Okay, so we can pretty much see most of the cards there and I think that's in focus. Looks like a lot of the same cards are reappearing for the readings, which is quite interesting as well. So sort of similar energies for a lot of you. Um, let's start with the major arcanas. We have one, two, three, four. <laughs> Everyone's been getting four as well. And court cards, we have one, two, two. So this reading might be a little bit more about yourselves and perhaps your own personal journey. Let's go up to the far left hand co corner, the card up there, the sun. What a beautiful way to start with June. And I guess for the Northern Hemisphere, it's the beginning of your summer because it's the beginning of our winter down here. So that sun kind of embellishes the whole feeling of of bliss and longer days and shorter nights and all of those activities that you engage in in the summer months. I'm personally a lover of summer, it's my favourite time of year and I'm always sad when summer disappears from the southern hemisphere. So the sun is one of the truly most loved cards that can turn up in a reading. It is um, we can't survive without the sun, so when the sun turns up in your car, in your readings, it just sort of embellishes the whole energy of life. And life is about activity and energy, laughter and love and light and growth, learning. All of those things are encapsulated within this card. So we see there there is a child sitting on a horse, so it is also about children, the possibility of conception and pregnancies as well as behaving in a childlike manner so letting go of some of your worries fears and anxieties and coming back to the youthfulness of being a kid and you know not really thinking too much in the future and being in the moment of now which is being in the present mindfulness it's also about the possibility of um, love and finding Harm, harmony relationships and love as well. So the sun tends to offer blessings for a reading so it's a really great way to start your month. You can take that energy further on through the month as you go through. Your next card, your court card, the page of swords is often an air sign energy and can be a younger person who could be in your family or um, a circle of friends or even something to do with employment. Often they come in in a sweeping hurry, they have something to say, they've got something on their mind. They are communicators so the key word with them is that they use words. So listen when they're around because they may be telling you something important that you need to hear or you might learn something from them. They often create a little bit of turbulence in the air because they move so swiftly and what they bring in is kind of like flitty fleeting moments. So that's the next card in your reading. It could be quite a fun time with the person around or as I say it could be that you have to listen to what somebody is telling you. The next one right next to him is the Knight of Pentacles, another younger person. Perhaps they're related, they might be family members or um, friends one way or another that are also together in this scenario or together in this first week when they appear. The Knight of Pentacles can also be the offer of a financial um, situation coming into your life. Often this card will turn up when the possibility of new employment is around. 
So if any of you have been looking for new jobs, this is a time when this opportunity may come into um, view for you. So have your CV on the go, have your answers for interviews ready and be presented to be that great employee that people want to hire. And while we're thinking about it, this card right next door, the Three of Wands, is often about uh, career choices and determining what you want out of life and where you're headed. So he stands there with his back to us and he is contemplating his future. And it's often known to be the creative realm for futures, so there's the possibility that career choices on his mind. If not career, it could be his studying at university or getting accreditation or becoming a tradesperson, something along those lines. Now the fact that he's looking out into the distance can quite often mean he is contemplating going away, so moving from his home even to another country or to another area or destination. So this is a, a possibility of what could be cropping up around that time or your thoughts and feelings as well. We come to the second row on the left hand side and we see the hanged man. When he turns up in your card be, uh, reading, sorry, because he's a major arcana and he's right below this one here, so there's some sort of attachment going on and communication between the two. The hanged man often means you're at a hiatus and things have come to a halt for reasons sometimes unknown to yourself, but often they are because of something within you just isn't feeling quite right. You might be wanting to make a decision about which direction to go, often with a relationship or with a career path, and you think to yourself, ooh, do I go left or right, and maybe I need to think about this. As well, it's almost as if the universe puts a bit of a blockade up and things tend to slow down, it gets truncated and you have to take your turn to wait for doors to open. But while you're taking some time out and contemplating things or even getting agitated that it's not going the way you want it, this is when you are meant to uh, listen to your inner thoughts and connect with the universe and come across some higher reasoning for why these um, stalls are in place. Everything happens for a reason at the particular point in time. So if there's a blockade up for something, think about it, re-strategize about it, contemplate how else it could be approached or a new uh, view or aspect or perspective of it. Also think why might it not be good for you and why perhaps you should choose something else. We see this enlightenment around his head which actually tells us that over time and with um, spending time alone and in your thought paradigm, you will come to an answer that is conclusive for you and you will learn from it and grow at the same time. Often you will spiritually grow. So the other thing I think of with this card is that sometimes there is head and neck pain around at this time which could be brought on by either a bit of stress or you know frustration. So sometimes it's good to have a massage or some Reiki or some physiotherapy to relieve the tension. And often when we relieve physical tension in the body, we allow emotional and um, spiritual tension to flow better as well. Moving to this card here, the Seven of Swords, it kind of works okay sitting next to that hanged man because they have a similar kind of stalled energy about them. This guy is contemplating what to do around a certain circumstance. He's unsure whether he's making the right choice. So you may feel this at this particular point in the month, should you stay or go, again, see the same as the hanged man, are you making the right choices? Now think carefully about what you do because if you're doing anything covert or underhand, it will get brought to light and someone else is likely to see what you're doing and um, tell tales or fibs. Also, there is the possibility that someone around you may not be doing things above board. So watch who you give your personal information to, in particular your PIN numbers, your bank accounts, if you are signing documents. Don't get fooled into any of these get-rich-quick schemes. If it sounds too good to be true, it won't be right. Look into everything that you sign really, really carefully. And just um, don't befriend any random strangers at this point in time. There's a possibility that some of them are not that honourable and don't have the best intentions. We come to this card here, the Six of Cups, and it's a really lovely card. It's um, the journey back through life, you know, through the childhood meanderings of our wonderful happy days and sunny days again, you know, thinking of summer when you were a child and all the joy and that laughter and the good times. And yes, I understand not everybody went through that. 
but this card brings back memories of fondness one way or another and oftentimes it can be an association of when you might be going to a, a family event where you haven't seen cousins or great uncles or grandparents for a long time and you re-merge with them and tell tales and regale things along those lines. There's also the post, so it's also school reunions fall into this category as well. Some of you might be attending reunions or weddings or engagements or even, um, oh no, it's any of those type of events. Now the other thing that this can symbolise is a past ex-lover coming into your life. Now there's a possibility that if this happens you will contemplate, do I really want to go back to the past and reconnect with this person? Or you'll think about the possibilities or the whys and the why nots, but nonetheless it's usually a pleasant time of recollection anyhow. For some of you, you might re-engage with a person from the past, from the romantic level. And in fact, this Empress sitting right next door, it could be an Aries person for some of you. So the Emperor is known as the Aries card and often he's associated with events occurring around about that time of the year. So we know that Aries has already been for the year, it's in the March-April time frame. So what this could initiate or, or be telling us is that something that you started or thought of or uh, an event that occurred around about that time is either back in the flow of things again or is still on the scene and being activated one way or another. Now this could be also the propensity of a person coming into your life who could be a romantic partner. It, it quite often is, and if so, he usually is an older Aryan man and quite sort of forthright and bossy and um, a little bit, you know, I'm right type thing and listen to me. However, if it's not for that reason, he can be a really useful person to have on board because quite often he can be very good around legal issues or uh, legal support or going to as a backbone for something if you need some moral uplifting. And actually how interesting, because right down here, sort of next to him on the next line, so energetically wise, right next to him is the Hierophant. Those two kind of go hand in hand. The Hierophant is also this um, stalwart of, of being legal and proper and doing things above board. You know, he's like a vicar or a priest or a bishop or something, a religious figure as well, and he's holding his hand up as if to say, don't do anything wrong. So you've had this message twice and the cards are connected as well. So really think carefully about any documentation you are signing or purchases you are making or new friendships. Make sure it's all above board and kosher. Um, this can also literally mean a reconnection to spiritual beliefs and the hanged man is also right above him. So some of you might be going through a period of awakening on your own inner personal journey of love, life, philosophy, psychology, spiritualism, everything could be entangled into that because they're major arcana cards so they have a much deeper meaning. Um, so June could be an enlightening month for you for many reasons. In fact, it's funny as I go through the reading, more and more keeps popping out. But here we have these three all in alignment. And they're three quite powerful major arcana cards and they're rolling through those whole three week periods. And it's quite a spiritual connection from right from the top down to the bottom. So I think you are going to be finding some sort of um, harmony point or, you know, sort of epiphany about connections one way or another. We come to this guy here and this one. Oh, and this one. That's a funny old bunch to have together. These would tend to be, out of all the pentacle cards, the ones that are more uh, reserved and have a little bit more tenacity for thinking, oh my gosh, have I got enough money? But in reality, they, they're saying, yes, you do, but you seem a little bit concerned about it. So I call this guy the worry wart of life. Look at him holding on grim death to his coins. Every, every bit of them he's like, I can't bear to let go because, oh my God, they might get stolen or I might I might not have them to spend in 50 years. That, that card tells us it's more about understanding that you're going in the right direction, that you've got your money in a fairly good place and um, 
it's there and it's available for you so don't be so worried and uptight about it remember what you choose to think about are the energies you attract into your life so if you're constantly worried about money or lack of money you're going to bring that energy in so open up your purse strings and your heart a little bit and don't be so afraid of money and that's another message coming in here there is nothing wrong with money this world in this physical plane works in the realm of finances one way or another so while we're here living as humans we have to learn to um, make the most of it there is enough money on this planet for every single person to have some so remember those words they're very powerful don't be afraid of money and don't constantly talk about lack of visualize having lots of and this brings us into this card the six of pentacles there's always two meanings to this you are either this person here giving out or you are this person receiving whichever way it is it can still be beneficial because everything in life is cyclical and everything has an opposite so when you give you are going to receive when you receive you are also going to give so hand in hand go both things some of you will be on the giving end and some of you will be on the receiving end and basically it's saying don't be afraid of either of those positions in life. I think one of the best things that we can do, one of the best emotions we can hold is gratitude. So whether you're giving or receiving, be grateful that you have the ability to be in either position because as I say it will flip around at some point. Another thing about this card I often think of is the possibility for... Um, putting in a job application for somewhere other than where you live so some of you might be thinking of that and there's also the possibility of an, an interview coming out of that the other thing that that card there can mean is sometimes you get given money from a family member or someone who's very dear to you who loans you some money if you like but there is usually a, a repercussion to it you have to either have them invested in the money somehow or pay it back or or spend time with them or something along those lines but it's still really positive we come here to this one so i call this the week of finances for you guys even though you've got the hierophant at the beginning he could be telling you too to not be foolish about your money and you know to make sure that you're doing all the right things regards finances and investments this guy here is saying the Two of Pentacles feels as though there could be an increase coming, which could be from someone you know, and on the other hand it might be going out again. So balance your funds, don't go uh, wildly spending, but don't be depressed about life either. You know, every time we're given something as an asset and it's great and you can celebrate accordingly. I think that's the best way to do it. Keep some for a rainy day. The bottom line down here, the Eight of Wands, is a really neat card. It often means um, travel, and it can be air travel. So some of you might be going on an overseas trip or a trip within your country, but by airplane. The other thing it can indicate is rapid energies around you and creative energies, as well as the possibility of new relationships coming. This may be just friends, you might meet new people in a workplace, but sometimes this card can indicate romantic interest as well. So we've seen a little bit of romance in your reading around a few different cards. So I think, you know, summertime things are often a wee bit lighter and people feel a bit happier and engage more socially as well. Down here we have this Ace of Pentacles. This is your last week of June. And he's connected here to this too. So I'm thinking that there is a bit of an offer of money coming to you. That ace shows us um, some sort of increment or increase or prosperity or benevolence around pentacles and finances and also around the energy of the earth, which of course you guys are. This is your sign and this is where you, um, you'd be very good with finances. I, you're not the sort that would fritter it away on wild fancy things. You're much more likely to have a balanced checkbook and know where your money is at all times. But this is often about something coming to you and often in the form of money so sometimes it can be a job promotion a job increase or a secondary job or starting a new business or winning something or um, being handed something so keep your eyes and ears out in June for a little bit of positive in the money sector 
This one here is a little bit more again talking about travel or retreats like a breakaway somewhere. So there's the possibility some of you may go for a nice lovely weekend retreat into the forests. <laughs> I'm thinking of forests because I see a tree. Um, or somewhere in the hills or out into nature. And sometimes you'll take another person with you and it could be for a very close and special encounter uh, of the physical kind. Now this can also be a time of fertility and conception and I also think of this too as being a little bit that way. It's a fertile bunch of cards down here in this corner. Um, the card here, the Four of Swords, does tell us though to take a break and to slow down and reconnect with our thoughts and perhaps just the gentle energies of life, you know, contemplate how peacefulness can often be um, a beneficial resource to us and we don't slow down enough, so that's another message of the card. And the other thing that it can mean is sometimes it's a minor surgery that some of you might be planning or um, undergo. The last card for the month is a little bit of ambivalence. It's almost as if you've had such a kind of interesting buoyed up month ahead that you get to the end and you go, hmm, what, no more, what, you know, I'd like some more offerings of something. Because this is the card of being sent some sort of offering or deliverance, but you sort of feeling as if it's not enough, or it's not what you wanted, or it's not in the direction that you expected. So the key word here is gratitude, and we talked about that up here in this line, so you're being told several times to really show gratitude in the month of June and connect with it. It's like when we don't show gratitude we're giving, we're kicking things in the face and why would you do that? Because don't look a gift horse in the hand. <laughs> I've probably made that up but there's something similar along those lines anyhow. So when an offer comes to you please review it and re-look at it and um, don't be so hasty to turn things down. It could turn out to be one of the better offers of your life, but because you weren't really interested in looking enough, you bypassed it. So always look at all offers coming. There could be something for you that is better than you first thought. And that seems to be how you're finishing your month of June, which is still quite cool because that means there are things happening, there are people around you, energies going on, and activities to think about. So there we are, Virgo. I think you've got quite a nice reading here with potential for a great summary, lots of feelings of happiness and past love and joy, a romance and something going on with your money that you um, have the opportunity to really get to um, spend time focusing on and appreciating and a bit of travel as well to throw in another aspect. So thank you all for joining me. I know you love this particular layout and format and it is a lengthy reading. It's really hard to do it any quicker than that. So I hope you have all thoroughly enjoyed it and I wish you all a wonderful June ahead. And for the Northern Hemisphere, have a happy, happy summer epoch and uh, really enjoy it. So ka kite anoa everyone. Much aroha. Namaste.